In my first game playing as Dracula, I wanted to test the AI to see if I could avoid all encounters and also never be seen by them on Legendary Tactics. Alright, so this is my first play as Dracula, and I wanted to try something a little bit different today. Um, part of the process of building a strategy guide is to play the game quite a bit, and I wanted to make you involved in the process today. So I'd like to crowdsource ideas from you, if you've played this game before, about Dracula. And what I'll do is I'll just analyze the game as I play, I'll, I'll talk through thoughts I'm having, suggestions I'm having. Do you remember it's my first game as Dracula? Uh, I've been focused heavily on the hunters for now because uh, we just created the hunter strategy guide. So, so they've got a, a pretty good setup here. Uh, what I've decided to do is also to speed up the game. So this game actually took about an hour to play. And so for my Dracula phases, they'll be all in real time. And for the hunters, they're going to be playing in about 400% speed. So it's going to really accelerate the game down to about 35 minutes, just so that you get maximum focus on Dracula through this. So just having a look at my cards here. My initial thought when I'm starting out is that I want to put Dracula right up in the top of Britain or the UK because I think it's going to be important that I have a trail that doesn't block me in the late game or in the end game. I don't want to end up where I, I can't cross my own trail. So I think what I'll do is burn through Britain first and move through as many of these spaces as I can before they get onto my trail. And, and if they don't threaten me too much, I'll just keep hanging around here. Then I'll hit the mainland through the mid game and hopefully it'll lure them towards Britain a little bit. Um, just deciding which cards I mean, I haven't spent a lot of time with these cards yet, so just deciding which ones are going to synergize best because uh, right away I can see that the game is probably going to focus around what order do I place my cards in. It seems that some of them are going to cause damage, some of them, some of them will slow down the hunters, and some of them will score points for me. So um, I guess also at this stage I'm deciding, do I want to try to score points? Do I want to try to inflict harm on, on them? And I guess my my instincts are, because I've played a lot of Scotland Yard, so my instincts are just, as Mr. Rex, or as Dracula in this case, to hide as much as possible, just never be seen and, and try to avoid. So uh, my entire goal this game is to never be seen once. And I want to see if the AI can get on to what I'm doing here. Uh, if once they pick up my trail, if then they can get ahead of me, in the hunter guide I suggest that you can't be chasing Dracula, you need to get ahead of him. And so we'll see if I can outwit this AI. So this, as I say, this will be the process that I go through to create a strategy guide. So here I'm just starting to get to know the characters and the, the, the game itself. And so I'm looking at um, the vampires. I think that would probably uh, slow things down quite a bit. So until the card matures, it doesn't do the bottom portion of the card. It's just the, the top portion of the card if they trigger it. So I'm just at this point deciding which one. And, and I think if they ever do go to Britain, I just want to tie them up and hang them up there. So um, that's likely a decent play uh, just to try to slow them down. So please, if you have thoughts on uh, what you'd like to add to the strategy guide, if, uh, if you'd like me to include your ideas in the strategy guide, please put them down in the comments, uh, especially if you're a player who's played this a lot more than I have. Uh, I've just been fascinated by this game because uh, it hasn't been out that long, and uh, we got an early release of it, and um, often we'll, we'll play it a few times and, and move on to the next game, but I found with this game that uh, I keep wanting to play it more and more and I'm really enjoying um, both sides of the game and, and I like that there's more depth to it than it initially appears. Uh, it seems that the game has a lot more to offer than, than what's on the surface. So it seems as if as Dracula you become a programmer and you're almost programming 
what will happen, what order it's going to happen in, and I think you need to be aware of um, well, definitely all, all of the card text and the card effects, but you also need to plan when the cards start maturing, um, what are they going to be doing, and I haven't completely mastered, obviously it's my first game, so I haven't mastered that yet, but uh, so I'm not really in danger yet, so I'm thinking I'm going to just keep hanging out on the island. Um, I got to place a couple of storms, and uh, my only real threat is Mina Harker there. And I'm also thinking too against the AI, the bluffing element isn't something that's going to come into this, so against another player I might put the storm somewhere far away from me so that they might actually think I'm trying to prevent them from, from getting close to me, and uh, I would probably take a risk like that. But against the AI, I think it's probably better to actually physically impede them um, so that they don't come over to the island just yet. So I think, in a way, you almost need to lure the hunters um, to where you want them to go as well. Um, they haven't discovered any any of my trail yet, but I do want to sort of pull them away. If they're going to get rid of these cards so that they won't mature, they're going to have to get way off the inland in order to take care of these cards late in the game. So this leads me to a few questions, and, and uh, I guess number one is, should Dracula... Um, be very active in trying to score influence so should I be trying to find Mina, Mina Harker and uh, cause some damage and knock her off and, and gain influence that way uh, and, and get her where she's weak in case um, a big conflict does arrive at least I can take care of her easily or is it preferable to just run the clock out just sneak around in the shadows and hide and let events mature uh, so as I've told you that's the approach that I'm going to take for now so I'm just really Really populating all of England with as many of these cards as possible. I also, because it's self-contained up there, if they decide not to go to the UK, then that's really good for me because I really want these events to start maturing before they've actually even found the trail. And at this point, they're not even really close to discovering it at all. So um, I suppose uh, both of these options as Dracula are viable, whether you want to want to go on the offensive or whether you want to play a, a more stealthy defensive game or probably a combination of the two. And um, that, that seems to be um, part of the balance of discovering what, what the breast approach is. So I think um, deciding on what's going to work well next to each other. So here, I guess I'm just trying to bung them up here and uh, let's keep Van Helsing uh, from moving uh, west. I'd like to keep them in the east if possible and that's good, it, it did seem to force the AI that, that way a little bit. I think a human player might see what I was up to and try to come uh, west, but uh, Mina's really, out of, they're, they're all massively out of position here, which works really well for me. The other major question that I need to think about is when do I engage? So really I get a choice when I'm Dracula as to when I want an engagement to happen and uh, because my goal is to never have them engage with me. I know from a viewer's perspective that might seem a little boring but really as Dracula it seems I mean, if they can't find you, then it doesn't matter what weapons and tools they have, they, they can't use them on you. So um, I, I think I need to plan my route. So at this point, because they're all in the east, I'm starting to think ahead. And long term, it's hard to predict exactly where they'll go. But what I can predict is that they can't get all three of those, those characters over to Spain fast enough. Um, in order to beat me there, so I'm thinking that heading towards Spain might be the way to go here. And uh, in terms of revealing myself, I don't want to do that at all um, by by tipping my hand with roadblocks and that sort of thing um, against human players, but against the AI they seem um, sort of oblivious. So Mina's, Mina's a little bit close, but I think as Dracula you, you can't have 100% safety, so might be best to um, dip across here, get onto the mainland. I'm running out of options there. So this is where the, uh, the trick comes. 
thinking uh, let's let's get to the mainland. It will take her at least two turns to get to me there. So just a little bit of safety, and it could be frustrating too, I think, for the hun hunters, even if they're just a robot, to uh, come so desperately close, but just not be able to quite get their greedy paws on me. Now, something else I'm thinking about here too is that that C card, uh, because I've got that in the queue, that means there's one more card now that's not going to mature and, and have any kind of effect. So going to C seems like it should really be, number one, it tips my hand that I've, I've after one, two, three, four, five turns, had to, uh, to go to C, so they might actually make a quick calculation and figure uh, I may have done something as I did. Um, but but that, that C card also just sits there as a flag and reminds them that I was at sea, so they'll know I'm sort of going to a coastal city next, gives them some information, but it also doesn't mature. So going to sea is not something that, that seems like it's going to be wise for Dracula. And of course, all of these um, ideas that I'm having right now, um, I haven't tested them. This is just my initial instincts, and uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on um, how to use the sea as Dracula. And uh, it'd be great if you, you included your, your ideas so that I can include those in the strategy guide if you want to share those with other players. However, the Reckless Vampire might be a good card after the sea space uh, because that card will discard the, the cards before it. So that might actually, then at least you, if you have to use the C, you don't lose a card that was already maturing. So that, that is one time that could be effective. So right now my, my chances are actually looking quite good that uh, they're not going to spot me in the early game anyway. So we've almost gone a full week here. So it seems I really need to start to get to know what cards are coming out. They haven't been pouring the cards to me yet, but I am I am getting some cards. Okay, so the Bats card. Or the Hoax. So I can't ambush with that one, but I could delay them. And if they do try to cut me off, that might be useful to have a delay right there. Uh, because once they get to the mainland, they might get savvy to what I'm up to. So three storm tokens at this point, not necessarily, I don't really need any of that. So sensationalist press, devilish power. At least I'm starting to get some options. It may entirely appear that some of my, uh, my plays are completely random, and they may in fact be that. This is really the test game, just to see what works and what doesn't work. Hopefully by the end I'll sort of figure out uh, what's great. But yeah, sequencing that trail of cards so that one event triggers and then the next and the next. It might be good if you can you know, put a card down that's going to push them into another uh, card that's, that's going to cause them some damage or, or do an ambush. So... It is very helpful in this game to play both sides, for sure. I'm just realizing as Dracula now that um, playing as Dracula is going to really help my gameplay as the hunter, too. Yeah, please make suggestions, too, in the comments if you um, have uh, suggestions for the best cards. This game does have wolf form on, and uh, I'm I'm saving that card because it seems quite good. So the Reckless Vampire. So that one actually, that scores four points, so it, it's really the point generator. The Natural Fog, that's a delay. Okay, and so that's to break their pistol, so that could be useful. But I'm not really planning on getting into an engagement, so... That one really causes them to waste some turns, the mob, because they have to get rid of cards in order to not take damage. So the hunter can become delayed to discard this card. And that's advancing by four points as well, so that's great. 
I'm up to four influence now. I think I did probably make a mistake there because I had some cards locked and loaded ready to go and uh, those got discarded. Um, so that maybe wasn't terribly effective. But if I'm going to end this game without them finding me, then I probably need to focus on starting to score points. Okay, so Mina is now... I was hoping she would actually land in the UK and start falling into some of my traps. So she's actually starting to get a little bit close to me. Fortunately, she can't find me from that sea space, but uh, let's see if she makes the right play here. And lands. Okay. So I do have one buffer here between me and her. So I could score another four points with the Reckless Vampire. I mean, that's getting me up to eight, which is nice. But maybe I just wanna, yeah, I think I'll just toss a slowdown in case Mina lands there. If maybe, um, that's the other question is, do you populate the naval ports with uh, the slowdowns? so that if they're following me, then I can go out to sea and they'll be, they'll be held up for a turn or two while I run away and increase the chances of not being captured. Okay, she made the wrong choice there, went to the English Channel. So they're converging, all four of them. They seem to think I'm right up there around Paris or north of France, so. Also, they're not really using their hunter powers very well, so Mina isn't really narrowing down where I am. She should really be able to find me, but I mean, she's wasting so much time at sea that um, the AI, yeah, AI seems a little bit uh, daft. So my thought here is they're not close, so I'm, I'm just going to keep doing a, a wide loop around Spain so that if they land anywhere around the edges, the periphery, they're going to run into some trouble. Oh, wow, they're, they're completely off my scent here. But... Uh, that's fine. That works out well for me. So we'll just keep rolling around. I think I may have misplayed that Emmanuel card too because I'm not getting any event cards at the top of the deck that are to do with me. So uh, perhaps I'm underutilizing. Actually, it seems I'm using the move, but I'm, I'm not actually using uh, the other option I have for Dracula. So this is part of my noobishness at the game right now. Um, it seems I could probably make better use of that. On the other hand, there might be an argument that I should save those special event cards uh, for when I really need them. So Wolf Form does seem a little bit OP to me, the fact that I can run two spaces. And uh, that could be really useful. So if they ever get close to me, um, I'll pull out the Wolf Form there. Okay, three encounter cards. So Heavenly Host is in my mind, the best card that the Hunters have. So if I can do something to counter Heavenly Host or to get them to discard that card permanently, I think that would be the way to go. Ooh, Desecrated Soil, okay. That sounds promising. So I wonder, now that they're all in the north, I'm hoping I can slip by in the south of France. And if I can ever just make a loop down cross maybe either into Italy or go straight for Austria, then I might be able to slip the noose there and do a, a full loop of the map. That would be quite enjoyable. Top event card is not a Dracula event. Okay, so there must be a way to uh, accelerate. I haven't done enough reading or play yet to know if there's a way I can accelerate how fast those event cards are cycled through, so I'll need to do some research on that. Saboteur, all right. So I think I need to be looking for some, ooh, the Heavenly Host. Should be looking for some point scoring cards very shortly. Okay, Nantes is, is visible to them. So they are savvy to where I used to be. Definitely ambush. It's funny, even at 400% speed, uh, the hunter turn doesn't seem overly fast. Oh, I took a couple damage there. Okay, so I do have a couple of cards that can heal me up. I don't think I'm in desperate need of that just at the moment. 
but I should probably populate a few of those on the map just so that if I do start to get low, I can heal up a little bit. So there's my way of scoring points. So another delay with the bats. Ooh. Okay. And really, I think they've set it up nicely so that you can't play just one reckless vampire right after another. So you really need to plan to space those out so you don't lose the previous ones when you score four points with one. And uh, that is starting to seem to me like it might be a good strategy is every four cards on the trail we might want to place a point scoring card so it's getting a little dicey there Seward is and uh, all three of them actually are getting to a place where it could be a little hit and miss for me so do I dump back to Madrid and hope that they take a little time. I don't think so. I think they're going to corner me if I do that. So I'm, I'm going to have to go to C, which unfortunately isn't a great idea. But at least I can try to slip past them. I mean, if they're reading this wisely, yeah, see, they would have really, they've, they've drawn quite a nice line there. I think they've discovered that I'm in Iberia and want to cut me off. So we'll see if I can slip past them here. But they've really got to start taking care of those maturing cards or they're going to run into trouble. Now this seems like it's also tipping my hand quite a bit. Yeah, let's get a point scorer in there. Love it. Because I'm going to go sea space, land space, sea space. And if they knew I was in Iberia then a smart AI would probably figure out... Okay, so um, that I'm in the just between the Mediterranean and the Tyrrhenian Sea there. So, so I'm going to put the unnatural fog there so that it forces them to go around the outside loop, which might cause them to take damage or get hung up on some of my, my cards. And that, that would be the other thing, is paying attention to what cards I have put where. Uh, because at this point, I've completely forgotten what I did where, so that might be useful to know if I'm trying to funnel them somewhere, what cards are going to um, enhance my effects on them. All right, I like seeing them having to discard. That's nice. It's pretty cool. This game, I think, can go on for a couple of hours, two or three hours, so it's nice to be able to play through with this digital edition where uh, it can go rather quickly, and with this accelerated game, it almost cuts the game in half on the time. So, uh, pretty pretty cool to check out the full circuit in 34 minutes, especially when my goal is to never be seen, because I imagine that would be quite dull from... Well, especially if you're watching from the hunter perspective, at least from my perspective, you can see if they ever get close. So again, I'm just using those uh, roadblocks to try and uh, prevent them from getting into Italy, which is where I think I need to go. So I can either, from Italy, I can either start to move north, and it seems as if they've figured out what I'm up to here. They're starting to make headway. Mina is just on the verge of being able to use her power to discover me. But I can either try and thread the needle up the middle or I can go across and head for Turkey. Do a loop around that way. Lots of reckless vampires, so I could really start scoring some points here. Yep, another delay card there. Haha, -ha, no hunters in Iberia. Okay, well, too bad. Ooh, okay, so not bad. Mina is really tracking me hard here. Misdirect, that seems like a cool card, but at this point... I don't think it's going to do a whole lot for me. Wolf Form, I'm just saving for getting into trouble. 
Ooh, swiftness. That could be a lot of fun. Play during the Dracula phase, and I get to go twice. Devilish power. Wow, that one actually seems pretty good, too. Unearthly swiftness. Maybe I'll, I'll just give myself a little bit of a leap here. Might as well start using some of those cards. That does seem to be another tactic that might be useful is early on to not burn through your best cards and to save them for when you really need them. Because early game, the hunters really don't have much to go on. Hmm, wolves, okay. Man, there's a lot of cards in this game to get to know. I think I'll have to try another game where I focus on, on trying to win conflicts and where I try to pick off some of the weaker characters. Game plays really nicely too. I really like this digital edition. Ooh, four damage. Wow. Okay. That seems like quite a bit. If I can really catch them in that trap with the wolves. Wow. That's pretty cool. Huh, nice flavor text from each of the characters down in the bottom left. That's kind of nice. Two more damage. Okay, so I've started to take enough damage that if I do end up getting into a major conflict, I'm going to need to be careful. So I need to do something about that. Okay, just having a little trouble here. I'm clicking everywhere I can click, and it is not allowing me to remove that roadblock. It's just a little bit glitchy. We'll try a different camera angle, see if that helps. And it does not. There we go, okay. This took a little, little finickiness. Ooh, everybody's all rested up. So these guys are in really good shape. If uh, if it comes to a conflict, they're all getting pretty close to maxed out. So I really got to make sure they do not find me. I wonder what the likelihood is. I mean, if you've played a lot of games of this, how often do hunters not find Dracula? Is this is this a common occurrence, or um, do you basically find Dracula every game? Maybe I'm just exploiting a weakness in the AI here and uh, taking advantage of their ineptitude. I don't believe there's a way to scale up the AI to make them more challenging either. But it's still, it still it changes this game a lot too to be able to have this single player mode. I really enjoy that, that uh, if you want to just rip off a game on your own and practice and, and learn some strategy the way I am now, human players are obviously going to be quite a bit different. Now, the misdirect doesn't seem particularly useful to me at this point. I mean, if they were, if, if, if it felt like they were close and they knew where I was, I think I would use that. I don't need wolf form just yet, so let's just hang on to that in case I get in need. So do I take a little risk and get close to Seward here? He's a bruiser. He's a bit of a battler. He can he can fight and then heal fairly quickly. So that uh, may be somebody I don't want to tangle with. But I think I need to start scoring some points. So that that could be pretty powerful, actually. Especially now that Mina's starting to, to follow my trail. Ooh, the spy. Okay, let's give that a whirl. Alright, there's my four points. Excellent. I do like that it takes to 13 as well, so I can't just drop another four-pointer. I'm going to need to get that extra point. Oh, and he 
you guessed wrong. Oh, poor fella. Looks like he's trying to pin me down in Italy. Not going to work, I'm afraid. The Heavenly Host, okay. So that's not really what I want to see him. He can do four damage on me with that card. So Van Helsing is closing the net as well, but I mean, they're following me, right? They're, they really need to get somebody ahead of me. Godalming, he's way out of the mix. Maybe I should be a little more nervous than I am here, but somehow I don't feel like they really have many clues about what's going on. Hmm. Uh, maybe I can just muck with them and get rid of their ally here. This is where not knowing the game well enough is a challenge too, because I can't remember what their ally is doing, but I think whatever it is, I'm sure it's good for them. Sister Agatha. I need to go research all these characters. I do feel like a bit of a reckless vampire because if they use their tickets right, they might be able to flank me or surround me or land right on me. Yeah, let's get a vamp down that they need to fight. I love the look of that red screen. Time is ticking. The clock is running down and they're all going to start falling into my path. This is great. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a really cool graphic in the top left, too. That looks really fearsome. Hmm. Do I play it risky? Yeah, let's give him a chance. I don't want to go to Seward. He seems like he might... Uh, be able to peg me down a bit. All right, a little more influence scored. I just really need a couple more plays to make this happen. Okay, so I just, this is where I need to be careful that I'm not in the same region. Oh, good, yes, okay, so I wasn't in Italia. She searched Italia, didn't find me. I am still incognito. But they really don't seem to know what I'm up to. So do I go to Brussels? I think so. I might as well get as far from harm as possible. And then I'll have a chance if I want to go left and, and work my way back down through France and Spain, which doesn't seem ideal. If I cut to the east, I've got a lot more territory open to me there. So that's game. That's great. Cards maturing. Never spotted me. Got my 13 points. Let's check out the results. So that seemed very effective. I mean, considering it was my first game, I managed to beat the AI. Never got spotted. Wasn't even close. I could have survived a few conflicts even if they had found me but please do uh, make suggestions if you would like to be included in our legendary tactics strategy guide love to hear your thoughts on the game and uh, we'll need to do a few more playthroughs and really uh, start to figure this game out before we can claim any kind of knowledge about how to play Dracula but uh, do go check out our Hunter Strategy Guide if, uh, if you're a beginner or an intermediate level player. Um, also, if you're an advanced level player, please feel free to add any other comments to that as well. Uh, we certainly can't cover every single strategy out there, and, and we'd love to hear your thoughts on um, what else is working for you so that we have a comprehensive uh, guide for everybody out there. So don't forget to bite and subscribe. We would love to... Uh, have you come back and visit us at Legendary Tactics down the road? Thanks so much for your time. This is Flash from Legendary Tactics.